Corinne from The Sewing Works, and today I want to talk to you guys about painting on fabric with my lovely all-purpose ink and my little Fantastics. I'm going to show you the techniques that I use to either create something on a blank canvas or embellish something that I've already made. So my hope is to make this darling chirp quilt by Megs and Me even cuter because I think that these black work flowers are just fading a little bit because they don't have that pop of color. So I'm gonna jazz it up a little bit. To give you an idea of some other projects that I've done with this, which were more on a blank canvas, I've got my cute little piggy. He's one of the first ones that I did. This was all white fabric that I um, traced out the outline of the pig and the house in the background. And then I painted it. And then I came in and did some thread play. Now this particular project, I felt like I stitched it too much. So he's got a lot of heavy thread, a lot of detail going on. He still looks really cute from far away, but I think the stitching to me is a little too much. So in my subsequent project, which I'll show you here in a second, I definitely focus more on the painting and less on the stitching. So here is my donkey. Some of you have seen this before, but you see that I didn't do a whole lot of stitching down on his body, but there's a lot of shading going on here. Still perfecting my grass and uh, some of the background kind of muddy stuff, but um, he's even got three dimensional little uh, forelock there. So I hope you like painting as much as I do. I use it not only to create my own things from scratch, but to embellish, or even if I have a picky little spot where I have bad tension in an embroidery project or on my long arm, I can dial up just the right color with my paints and correct that really easily without ripping out and having to restitch things. So I hope you're gonna have as much fun as I do and let's dive right in. Okay, so here we are on at my little workstation. I have a test block that I can practice on and I've got my little paints out. One of the things that my lovely instructor Diana taught me when I started this painting process was to mark your fantastics with what color that you're going to use. So I happen to have this one over here that I am going to use today and it is number 15. So that is just this straight cherry pink. That's what I use this brush for. <coughs> when I mix paints, I will either give it a name or I won't mark it at all. So I see that this one over here I've marked with an M. I think I was trying to make this a mauve color. So I don't know what that one's going to look like. You can reuse some of these older sticks if you don't want to use that color anymore and you want to morph them into something new, but it never hurts to have a nice blank slate. The Fantastics come in two points. This is called a bullet point. You see how it's rounded? I prefer the brush point, which is a tip. And you don't need very much ink on them. So let's just take my number 15 and I'll show you how it works when you just want to use the colors straight as they are. I'm going to open up my little bottle here. And there's often a drop on the cap, which is easier to get at than dunking it in the bottle because you might get too much. Oops, that's the wrong one. Number 15, here we go. So you can see there's not very much on there. I just want like one drop of color. I have some extra fabric to test it on. You always want to have this handy. And I, I embroidered on the back of this fabric to make it more subtle with the honeycomb look. So the technique I'm going to use is just like a side swipe. And the more pressure and the fresher the paint is on there, the heavier the color will be. You want to kind of practice this until you're not getting the streak. So see how now I'm getting more of a solid color and not a streak. You got to kind of prime your brush to be more color all over, especially since this one has been used. It's got a little bit of a grit to it that I got to kind of break through. So the more pressure, the more color I'm going to get and you just play with that and the color variation that you want before you go on to your real project. So I am going to use that one here in a minute. Now I want to talk to you about mixing colors, which is one of my most favorite things to do. 
And I have this little eyedropper here that I'm dialing up the colors to match what I've been doing in my chirp quilt. The one thing you wanna be aware of with this is you wanna to try to keep it as clean as possible so you're not mixing, unintentionally mixing the colors in your bottles. So for one of the colors, I know I've been practicing on another sample and to get this more mauve color, I'm going to do two parts pink to one part gray. So I'm gonna to try to get a couple of drops of pink. One, two, three, and a bubble. Okay. Get all that pink out. And I always use my little scrap fabric to kind of clean up my dropper before I plunge it into the next color. And find my gray. So I squeeze out before I even put it in the bottle. And then I just only need probably two drops of gray. One, two. So I'm using the one that I have designated with the M on it somewhere. Oh, this one will work. I'm going to give that a quick mix, which is going to put quite a bit of paint on my brush. And then I'm going to once again kind of dial that in until I'm getting about the right consistent look that I want. Once I've got that how I like it, I could take it right to my project. These particular flowers, I want to use the True Pink on. Let me just make sure I got enough. Ooh, see now I've got way too much. Okay, that's about where I want it. It's easier to add more than it is to take it away. So I'm just gently using the side of the brush to fill that in. Try to keep it in the lines. This is kind of a watercolor look. And I can go ahead and do this other flower. I think I've got enough paint going. And I might come in with this burnt orange color that I've dialed up over here. I think I'm going to do the burnt orange for the center. There we go. That's looking great. Okay, I'm gonna keep going. I'll show you where I get here in a couple minutes. Once you're done painting and you're happy with your colors, you'll need to set it with a hot iron. So you'll take a piece of scrap batting, lay it over the top, and this is going to take about 30 seconds of full on heat, especially since you're going through the batting to really set that into your fabric, which makes it completely washable too. Now let's show you how the quilt turned out. So here it is, all done. You can see how much more my flowers pop and I may, was able to match the colors of my fabrics. I'm very happy with the way that this turned out. I hope you enjoyed this demo and maybe you'll give fabric painting a try. See you next time.